very good idea. Alright, uh, thanks for coming today. Uh, my name is Chris Schaefer. I'm the advisor for uh, physical sciences and biological sciences here at Bothell. Um, so I'm wondering, like, how many of you are considering uh, chemistry degree of some kind, or, or physics degree? Raise your hands up high so I can have an idea of this here. Uh, okay, so some physics, some, some chemistry, and uh, so I'm wondering if people could shout out, like, what kinds of things are you hoping to learn today about these degrees, or maybe about uh, possible jobs in the future? Um, does anyone have any general questions that they're hoping to answer? Do I have to single people out? Anyone who makes eye contact? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what are you hoping to learn today? Uh, just one thing. I don't know where, when's the best time to go for classes? I don't know. To go for, like what classes to take when? Okay. Uh, let's see. Oh, now, now everyone's going to avoid eye contact. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um... What kind of jobs can you get with a physics degree? That's a great question. That's the question a lot of people ask. Okay. Um, what types of different degrees do you get? Uh, I mean, a uh, physics degree? Like what types of? Like what kind of graduate yeah. degrees can you move on to? Okay. Yeah, we can talk about those things and possibly others. Uh, so things I was going to talk about uh, are, first of all, what is physical science? Uh, what is, what is science, first of all, and what is physical science specifically? Uh, what kind of jobs? So uh, I knew that would be a question. Just majors and minors that we have on campus that might interest you if you're going into one of these uh, in one of these directions. Degree requirements. We'll, we'll talk about prerequisite requirements and job and sorry, classes that you can be taking uh, that are required for the degree before you get into the degree. Uh, how to plan out course for in general, and then just related clubs and student groups. Uh, and then we'll have some questions at the end as well. Okay, so physical science, uh, what, what is science? Well, it's um, just systematically organizing knowledge. Uh, these are theoretical sciences, so as opposed to engineering, it's really about uh, getting deep into uh, natural systems and understanding how they work and organizing them in a way that, in a way that we can understand. Um, and physical sciences is a subset of what we call natural sciences. So these are, uh, we, we also have formal sciences, which are things like math and computer science and logic, uh, which deal with patterns that don't necessarily have, uh, you know, some, something in the real world that we can relate them to, uh, although they, they tend to relate to things in the real world as well. Uh, and then there's also social sciences, which deal with people and how they interact uh, and, and what systems arise from that. Uh, but physical sciences specifically um, is looking at non-living systems. So we're looking at uh, not not biology, but uh, more like um, atoms and how, uh, how they interact with each other, form molecules, uh, and, and then there's always going to be overlap between each of these. We kind of take reality and segment it in a, into a few different parts. We kind of go from the very, very tiny things like physics and build our way up to uh, earth sciences which is like hydrology and geology and how those all interact. And then astronomy is how very, very big things happen over very, very long periods of time. So uh, looking how celestial bodies uh, move through the universe, for example. And so this is what you'd be focusing on. Uh, our physics major is mostly this first one and this last one. And our chemistry major focuses on, on these things here. Uh, earth sciences, we do have a new earth sciences degree that's going to be coming up as well. So if, if you're interested in being outside and uh, learning about rocks and water and things like that, uh, there will be options for you there as well. Okay, so talking about jobs, uh, really you can do anything with uh, any degree. Uh, you don't have to feel like you are your degree or that your degree is your job. You're going to be learning skill sets that can be applied to any kind of job. Really, uh, 
what you're learning here is how to systematically arrange information. So that's something that you can use anywhere in your life. So uh, you can research uh, how, how to find information out there in the world that we haven't found yet, and how to organize that in a way that we can use it effectively. You can teach that to someone else. You could become an astronaut. Uh, healthcare physics students can be in healthcare. You could uh, work with instrumentation for measuring uh, bodies uh, in order to find an effective treatment for them. You could also uh, do that in chemistry. Many of our biochemistry students go on uh, towards pharmacy school, for example. Uh, engineering, you don't have to be an engineer to work at an engineering firm. They need theoretical scientists as well as engineers so that they have someone who really understands how these natural systems work. Um, we need people who understand how energy works so that we can run our power plants so that the system might go on to work at a power plant. And so might a, a chemist for that matter. Um, you can develop cool new stuff like uh, artificial intelligence or, or robots that uh, they need uh, physicists and chemists for those things as well. Um, and you can, yes, you can be a chemist and work on robotics, it's fine. And uh, you can also be, you know, the person that your local news channel giving a forecast or someone who predicts how earthquakes are going to occur throughout the world. Uh, and really, lots of other things. You can, you can use that knowledge of how systems work towards uh, helping businesses run more efficiently. Or maybe uh, designing websites. <laughs> and you will be doing some coding, uh, especially in the physics major, but also in the chemistry. Uh, that's, that's the way things are. Um, so if you want to learn how to code, uh, these are great majors to go into. So we have uh, a few majors here on campus. We have a Bachelor of Science in Physics. Uh, there's lots of astronomy uh, content in there, uh, but also we have areas in biophysics and, uh, and computational physics if you want to get more into, into the coding aspect. Um, and then we have a general and biochemistry option for our chemistry degrees. And uh, the biochemistry option is an option within the general option. It's just that focus is more on biochemistry. So um, you can switch freely between these majors. They um, really the uh, general option is if you want to go more in a kind of a research direction or material science. So if you want to work with engineers on like what kinds of uh, materials they're using in their projects, then you might go in the more general. Although biochemistry also works. Um, and we do have a BA in chemistry, and if you're really into uh, teaching, this is a great option because you can combine this uh, BA with a minor or with another major, and it's specifically designed to, uh, for students who might want to get a, a second degree uh, in education. Um, and this is not something that I will be advising for, but the School of Interdisciplinary Arts and Sciences will be advising for this uh, new Earth System Science degree, uh, which is uh, kind of owned by both the School of STEM and the School of Interdisciplinary Arts and Sciences. Um, and this is kind of, if you, if you like science, but you don't want to be restricted to one area of science, then Earth System Science is the way to go, because it has everything. It has uh, computer science in there, physics, chemistry, biology, uh, ecology if you want it, and it's a really flexible degree. So if you just want to be an everything scientist, then check out the Earth System Science degree. Uh, and sometimes here, uh, we're going to have uh, some new resources on the website, so keep an eye on the website for updates in the near future. And that's going to have some handbooks that really uh, explain the content of the degrees in more detail. Does anyone have any questions so far? I've just been kind of going. Yes. Um, can you just uh, explain what, what the difference between a BA, a Bachelor of Arts, and a Bachelor of Science is? Yeah, that's a great question. So uh, basically, a Bachelor of Science uh, will have more focus on being hands-on, on, on uh, technical skill in the lab or computers. Um, and it tends to be a little bit more rigid in specifically what you need to graduate with that degree. 
while uh, BA generally has more focus on interdisciplinarity, uh, we're hoping that you're going to take uh, things that aren't just chemistry, but maybe education or some other area, and try to synthesize those into, uh, into an experience that can get you towards um, different kinds of jobs in the future. And they're both, they're both really good approaches. One's, one's a like, narrow focus, and the other one's more of a broad focus, is how it was described. Um, any other questions? All right, some minors. Uh, so you may or may not know, uh, minors are a thing. You can do them at any campus, so don't feel restricted to just the minors you have at Bothell, although it can be a little hard to uh, coordinate all the classes that you need to take between, say, Seattle campus and here. But uh, do, do consider it. There are a lot of cool options over there, like marine biology minor, for example, uh, which we don't have that specifically here. But some that a lot of students would take at our campus would be, well, you can be a, a physics student who minors in biology. That's another great way of, really, is just um, getting another skill set in addition to your major. And that's, I think, one of the most useful things that uh, minors can help you with is really show, uh, showing that off, saying, hey, I didn't just do physics, but I have this whole other expertise. Um, and that might give you an edge if there's a job uh, specifically for biophysics that you're applying for, or uh, if you're applying for a grad program. And uh, I always suggest learning more coding. It's going to be very helpful. Okay, so um, just a little bit about prereqs. Uh, you want to have these done before entering the major, but you can have uh, the last course uh, on these lists in progress when you apply, so that that third physics can be in progress when you apply for the physics major, and that organic chemistry one can be in progress when you apply for the chemistry majors. Um, but you can also take other coursework to get ready. Uh, you know, you, I think you all know about your general education and area of knowledge coursework if you've been meeting with your advisors over pre-major advising. Um, so those are things that you can definitely work on while while you're kind of waiting to get into the major. But you can also grab some of the upper level work while you're getting ready. So if you're a chemistry student, consider maybe getting that business in early because that can help you have a more flexible schedule when you get into your upper division work. And that'll get you ready for your physical chemistry series that you'll be taking. And then you, uh, you physics students, you can take that 200 level work even when you're a pre-major, so you don't actually have to be in the major to take that 200 level of physics work. And we'd love to get you in, in there early, uh, getting those courses early so that you can, uh, again, have a more flexible junior and senior year. Uh, and then grab at least, if you have time, uh, one of those 300 level math courses. And uh, that, again, are pre those are prereqs for things in the majors that you'll be taking, but they're open to all majors. So. Um, differential equations is the 307, and that's just uh, useful in general in the higher sciences. Uh, and then the other ones here are matrix algebra and multivariable calculus. The physics major needs all three of these at some point, so consider getting those early-ish. A lot of the chemistry majors only require you to have any one of those. Um, and then other things you can take ahead of time are just Exploring, consider taking minor coursework, consider getting a coding class in there. Uh, and, and that can be something that can help you fill out your schedule by the time you're ready to apply. Okay, uh, does anyone have any trouble with planning your coursework? I did slide there, but I think, uh, is anyone here, is sort of like first quarter or second quarter here? Yeah, raise your hand high. Oh yeah, that's a lot of you. Okay, um, so if you haven't already, get used to looking at the time schedule, understanding what all the different little letters and, and links do and mean, uh, and also that Mind Plan app. It's a really good search tool. Um, just get in there. You can't mess anything up, uh, but the more you understand this, the easier it's going to be to really know how to plan your schedule. 
and uh, maybe you can spot problems before they become big, and you can meet with a pre-major advisor uh, to help you uh, resolve those any issues that you might have with signing up for coursework. Uh, and do keep in mind, planning coursework on my plan does not register you for the class. You do actually have to hit that registration button at the top right. Okay. Um, I highly encourage students to uh, try to get involved in some way on campus. For one thing, it, it does actually help your grades to be involved. It's a big morale boost to get to know students that are going through the same thing that you are and uh, who might have found some resources that you weren't aware of. Um, and even if you can't do a regular commitment to a club, just try going to one of their events. It's nice to kind of explore, see what, um, see what the other students are up to and who you might be able to meet. And you might even meet some of your instructors early, and some of those instructors might be reviewing your application for the majors. So consider going to the club events to meet your instructors. Um, and these are just a smattering of clubs that a science student might be interested in, but it's not nearly uh, all of them. So visit our forwarding page and uh, get to know uh, what kinds of uh, clubs we have going on on campus. And then if you don't see a club that you want to join, then make one. You can get a few of your friends together, find a faculty member who uh, would like to help you coordinate that, and uh, that, that can, um, I think, really bring your education to a higher level. So consider joining or making a club. Okay. And that's all the content that I had to talk to you about today, and we still have some time. Um, so does anyone have any general questions about anything I talked about, or things I didn't talk about? And just get out there. Uh, here we go. Do you have any specifics about the club that you can tell us? Or sure, yeah. So is there a specific club that you're curious about? Biology club. Okay, biology club. So the biology club uh, was dead for a while, but it was revived. Oh, wow. But it was revived okay. at, like, very strongly. The, uh, it was dormant. It was dormant. It was hibernating, yes. <laughs> like, like a tardigrade, I believe. <laughs> the, the tardigrade is a water bear, a little tiny microscopic oh, alien-looking creature um, that can survive in space. <laughs> and... Um, yeah, so now we have probably 80 students in that club. And they have uh, they have club meetings every Tuesday. I haven't had the opportunity to go to one of the club meetings yet. But um, I do send out a newsletter. Actually, if, if you ever want to join the newsletter, uh, you can send an email to this sci.adv.edu. Link, and I can add you to the, uh, the newsletter for our sciences students. And on there I put uh, events that are relevant to you all, uh, funding opportunities like scholarships, uh, let's see, new courses, new majors you might consider applying to, uh, all kinds of good information um, that the community kind of funnels uh, into our office that I try to make easy to digest by putting it in a weekly uh, newsletter. So, so yeah, definitely contact here if you want uh, if you want to get more information in general about about our physical and biological sciences. Okay. And uh, and that'll have specifically what events are coming up for the clubs. Too. You can also check out the clubs or the same page or their Facebook pages, and they should have their events on there as well. Any other um, Chris, on one of your slides, you had that um, uh, for my plan. There's a degree audit. Uh, oh yes. And I was just oh, yes. wondering if you could explain what that means, because I think some of the uh, first year mm -hmm. students may not know. Okay. So uh, something I handed out to you all today was um, those kind of degree checklists. Like it has all the requirements of your physics degree or chemistry degree, and that's just a checklist of things you need to get done to earn your degree. Your degree audit is basically the same thing. It's a checklist of things you need to get done to earn your degree. But the major difference is that your degree audit decides if you graduate or not. <laughs> so we really want to make sure that's correct by the time you're done, or else you won't get your degree. So I recommend looking at that at least once a quarter, because 
maybe you took a class that you thought would count for something, but it actually doesn't. And maybe that's because your advisor has to make a, a little adjustment on your audit. Or maybe it's because you took a class that's not the class you thought it was, and we need to plan ahead to make sure that you're getting all the classes you need. And that kind of leads to another thing. Do meet with your academic advisor. I'd say, you know, at least a couple times a year. Every quarter is great. That way we can really just um, talk about what you have left, maybe make some adjustments to your plan, make sure that you're getting out in a, a timely way, and also making sure that you're not taking the courses together that are like the hardest. Like, imagine taking the three hardest courses you could possibly take all at the same time. I, I've had students take physics and organic chemistry with this lab and biology all at the same time. All of them have labs. And it's not even how hard are the courses, it's how much time do you really have to do the work and, and understand the content so that you can move on and, uh, and not kind of crash later on. Um, so meeting with advisors is a good idea just to put that insight on what is a balanced course load and what is kind of uh, like over the top for most people. And a lot of that depends on what you have going on in your life. If you're, if you're working a lot, or if you have any kind of social commitments, then, then maybe you, know, you need to hang back a little bit and, and not do too much. But, but if you're like lucky enough to really have all the funding you need and you don't need to work, then maybe you can take on a little bit more. That's, that's OK. I think the point is to be at the challenge level that's appropriate for, for what you need. Um, that, I think I've more than answered that question. <laughs> Any other questions? Is anyone uh, taking a chemistry or physics series right now? Oh, great. So, what are uh, who's trying to go towards like an engineering degree? Okay. Okay. And then who's who's trying to go specifically towards a physics degree? I like you. <laughs> um, and just keep in mind that uh, I think I think the main thing that I said earlier is that you are not your degree, and your degree is not your job. And you are not your job. Those things are not each other. Um, the main thing is what skills are you are you getting? So so as you move through your coursework, just think about what uh, what skills am I developing, and how might I be used in the future? And I think that's going to help you uh, really get the most out of your education. Thanks for listening. All right, and then I think next.